Hey guys, welcome to Chai Guys Podcast. I'm Darian. And I'm Sarah. Chai Guys Podcast is the podcast where we feature Iranian Americans um, and we spill the chai on Iranian American culture. Today's episode, we have Pej Vathat. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So Pej um, is a successful Iranian American actor in Hollywood, um, currently starting, starring in The Old Man on Hulu, um, as well as The Dynasty and City on a Hill. Um, for our audience who um, are fans or not fans, can you just uh, give an introduction of basically who you are? I am Pej Vahdat. I'm an actor. Um, I've been doing this for about 19 years now. And uh, what else? That's it. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'm from uh, San Jose, California. California. I was born in Iran. Oh, wow. I was three months when I moved um, because of the revolution. Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah, been in the Bay my whole life and went to college in San Diego and, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, speaking of like building your platform and, you know, Darian mentioned some of your biggest highlights and like your current gigs right now. I think that's amazing. Um, what were some of the, you know, I guess you could say like social, political, even economic challenges that you may have faced as a Iranian actor, like oh, in the acting oh. industry? Uh, dude, when I started out was hell period that's uh, there's no there's no easy answer for that i i had no help like i didn't know a single person i moved here with a book that said acting for dummies i lived on the floor of my cousin's apartment in his closet wow because i know i had two hundred dollars i graduated college i moved here i literally had no idea what i was doing like nothing i was an athlete i was playing tennis uh, in college i i Briefly went on the tour, hated it. And then I went to a theater class on a dare because that's what I wanted to do in my life, but I just didn't see anyone who looked like me. Mm-hmm. And um, once I took that class, I quit tennis and lost my scholarship. Had to call my Iranian doctor father to tell him I'm not playing tennis. I mean, that was, you know, telling a doctor that you don't want to be a doctor <laughs> or an engineer or a lawyer or whatever else. Everyone, my dad was chill, man. He was so cool, man. My, my dad was so supportive because I was athletic and I was, I wanted to, I wanted to retire my dad and my mom. That was my goal in life. So I thought being a tennis player was the quickest way to do it. But I hated it. I hated every second of it. What did you hate about it specifically? Like the competitiveness, uh, no, like individuality? I love, I love comp- I'm very competitive. I'm a nut. But <clears throat> I don't like the sport per se, and I, I, I wanted to be a baseball player, and I had to make, there was like a fork in the road when I was playing baseball and tennis at the same time, and now I'm 6'1", but at the time, when you had to make that decision, I was 5'4", and I just didn't feel like I had the strength to be a baseball player, For sure. and um, I decided to play tennis, and it was six hours a day every day of my life, you know, and I got into a really good school for tennis. Uh, and I was really, I was number nine in the country and I was just good at it. But then um, I wasn't happy. I just didn't like it. So uh, I always wanted to be an actor. I just didn't think it was possible. And then I went to theater school. I'm sorry. Then I went to a theater class and just, I fell in love. I was like, oh my God, all my anxiety went away. <laughs> so I, I quit. I went and quit. I got in a big fight with my coach and I quit. And I put all my energy into tennis. I mean, into acting. So that was a drastic change for you. So, like, how sure were you that you wanted to transition into acting? Like, did you have any reservation or it was more of a gut feeling? I was zero reservation. It was so strange. I don't even know how I can explain that. It sounds insane. I was 19 years old. It felt surreal. Yeah, and it was just like, oh, my God, this is what I want to do with my life. Holy shit, I'm in love. And I don't have anxiety right now. I had so much anxiety. And then I decided to put all my energy into acting. And then my dad was so cool. He was just like, but I'll give you one year. I'm like, that's all I need. Uh-huh. One year, yeah. I'll be a star, I promise. So um, So that was like your head seat. That was kind of your kickstart, kickstarting moment. Yeah, yeah. And then I just went to L.A. after I graduated. And <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know a single person. Oh, my God. It was so scary. What was your first role? My first role was on a show called Sleep. Oh, that paid me. I mean, I had a bunch of roles. I mean, I did s- student films. I was an extra. I did plays in Compton for nine people. I was. I did everything you can imagine, anything and everything. Um, but the first time I was in the union, I got a job. I got into the union. Uh, it was a show called Sleeper Cell on Showtime. Uh-huh. I was selling... 
extended car warranties over the phone with felons because you could get phone gigs if you were a felon. And it was a bunch of unemployed actors and felons because at the time we could work from 6 a.m. to 12 and then go do auditions. So I got a call that said, oh, my God, I auditioned for the show and I got it. It was two lines in Farsi and I was in the union and I thought I made it. It was 11 months in. I, that was it. I was like, oh, my God, that's, oh, that's the greatest day of my life. So from that point on, did you feel like you had, you know, initially experienced any kind of like difficulty getting like, let's say, non-Middle Eastern roles or would they kind of push you into this corner of like only having to play like Middle Eastern? Yes. To your question. Um, Pretty much every job. I remember asking like agents like, wait, do they want an accent for this? Like it was immediate. It was the first question I'd ask, even though they're like, what? Why? You know, his name is Jason. But yes, a lot of it was that, but I got lucky because I got on a show um, that, I mean, let me just go back because another problem I had was getting actual representation because every time I met with a legitimate agent, they would say, we have one of you. Right. Inherently, it's a limited one of space. You. Yeah. Okay. So I couldn't get a real agent, so I started my own. I spent, I borrowed 5,000 bucks from my best friend and started an agency, (laughs) and my name was Jason Vaughn, Uh as the agent's name, and I would pitch myself all day while I was working, all day, every day, until I got a movie, and I took that movie to a legitimate agent, and that agent took me on, because I gave him 10% of a job I booked, and I just kept doing that. That was one of the toughest parts of starting, was getting someone to rep me that was legit, Um, Once I did that, I think, you know, I proved that I was worthy because I was getting real auditions constantly. You know, finally, I got a real agent. I I was actually getting in on these real auditions. And I booked a show called Bones um, about, oh, God, that must have been 13 years ago or something like that. And that was it. Do you think that role that you had gotten, you know, as a result of all of that self-advocacy and persistency was kind of like a pivotal moment to you establishing like some sort of the credibility necessary to be able to take on like more pertinent roles or what kind of was that was like that breakthrough yeah. moment that I you had that really I mean, I quit my day job. launched your career yeah yeah yeah, yeah that changed my life I mean I quit my day job and I was able to retire my parents I was playing a role that was an Iranian um, that wasn't stereotypical you know they actually I'll never forget it. He called me and he said, I want to change the narrative of Iranians in this world and not to make them terrorists or bad guys or, you know, whatever. I'll never forget it. And he did. I mean, at the end of that series, which was on for 12 years, I married the lead girl, you know, Mm -hmm. and it was it was it was that storyline. There was a storyline of me in Iran. He downtown Iran. He like. He made everything accurate, Farsi on the walls. I was going to save my brother, and I was kidnapped. And it was like this crazy story. And it was wild. And that show was amazing for Iranian culture, in my opinion. And I was grateful to do it. What that did was also allow me to turn down nonsense that I didn't want to do. Right. How, how was the feedback in terms of that? Did, you know, Amazing. Iranians reach uh, out to you? I mean, from, from what I heard, because it was on Farsi 1 in Iran, they show it. Ostokhuna is what they call it. Mm-hmm. I heard that they loved it, the government loved it, because Abana Namaz Mukhun, right? Mm-hmm. And he was this cool Iranian who Namaz Mukhun, he wasn't doing anything that they thought was bad. But once I did a show called Shameless, and I played a homosexual, a closeted homosexual, that was it. I couldn't go back. And they put me on a list. My cousins told me there's no way in hell you can come here, yeah. all that stuff. So, But Bones was very well received in Iran. So it seems like you're very socially conscious about, you know, drawing more positive attention to the Iranian-American community and showing that, you know, we are multidimensional, we are multifaceted, we're more yeah. than just, you know the bias perception of what the media has of us. So, you know, how have you been using your platform to kind of bring, you know, greater awareness to the current situation in Iran right now? I would assume you're you're definitely keeping up yeah, with everything. Of yeah, of course. It's it's you know, inspiring, it's terrifying. It's um, Do you have family yeah. in Iran? Yeah. My aunt actually called my dad last night saying they're they know what he's doing. He's posting on Instagram, he's posting on Twitter. 
And my dad, I had to lie to him because my dad is so scared, right? It's a generational. We yeah. all are. Yeah. So when I first posted about it, my dad called me, you know, in tears. My mom freaking out. They're going to kill you. Take it off. Stop, please. I beg you. So I said, okay, okay, okay. I'll do it. I'll, I'll take it off. And I blocked them on Instagram. <laughs> So they can't see it. So I just basically have no idea that they can't see what I'm posting. But some people are seeing and telling my aunt over there that he's posting. He's against the regime. They're going to do something. To him. My dad calls me again last night freaking out. And I was like, that's dad. I don't know. That's probably a fake account. I have a lot of people follow, you know, fake accounts and stuff. <laughs> so you're not scared. I'm not scared because if who am I to be scared? Look at these people over there. Yeah. These yeah, amazing. Yeah, exactly. They're in the mix, and I'm over here, P please, you know, if I'm scared, then, you know, I'm sorry. These women are so brave. These girls, these, I mean, even the men, of course, but these girls, man, they are so inspiring. So who the hell am I to be scared? I'm here to make sure that their voices, I mean, you know, I'm lucky enough to have this, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, fame or like a platform a platform uh, because of what i do and i'm lucky i got lucky and i'm successful at this business for whatever reason people like it people follow me and okay well what i'm gonna do because of that is make sure you see what's happening speaking of platform i know we've asked guests this season um and we've had a mixed you know responses what do you say to the other um maybe actors iranian actors that are choosing to stay quiet or ignoring maybe this issue. Um, do you think nothing of it or are you? No, I think a lot of it. Do you think, do you think it's of... justified or not? Yeah, not do you really? think it's justified? Feel free to be direct. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have very different, def I'm trying to, as the older I get, the more I'm trying not to have this like definitive answer on people. I don't know the reasoning, okay? Sure. So if someone's reason is my family's in danger and I don't want to put them in danger, that's different. I can I can mess with that. I can be okay with that. If you're quiet because of what? I, I, I don't, because you're afraid of not working or... Maybe what other people think. Whatever. I mean, nonsense like that is not okay with me. I do know two specific actors that I know that aren't saying shit, okay? And that, to me, is not okay. And I'm pretty sure one of them has no threats there have you personally called any of them out no because the I, I don't want to get too specific but one of them is very famous and her ex-husband who's not even iranian who i'm friends with messaged me how can i help what should i post wow. and he's super famous yeah. wow. the white guy i don't know why she's not but i don't I, that's why i won't judge it because i don't know why if there's a real reason, then I don't want to. I don't want to mess with that. But if it's because you're worried about your business, fuck off, because this is way more important than your career. Okay, this is a revolution, and these people are dying. They're getting killed. But if it's something else, like look, I don't want to put any one of my family in, in danger over there. They didn't ask for that. Right. I think most people who are staying silent, you know, they're just trying to protect their brand, which is definitely. Oh, well, that's yeah. not okay. Exactly. Okay, if that's your reason, if that person told me I'm protecting my brand, I tell them to go fuck themselves. And sorry to be graphic, but that's how I feel. Because yeah. Nazanin Bonyadi has a brand. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Nazanin Bonyadi is out there every day. And she's on Lord of the Rings, man. Like, this is no joke. She could definitely be ruining her brand. But she's been doing this for years, so this isn't even... It's not a trend. Yeah. It's not a trend. Some people are, in my opinion... <laughs> look, dude, some people do this shit to help their brand, in my opinion. How do you think they're doing that, the ones that are trying to benefit? Uh, I just think some people are out there, they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Like, imagine, look, I'm not that educated on this stuff. All I can do is go by Nazanin and another Nazanin friend of mine, Noor, and then, you know, my, my friend Nusha. These are women that know what the hell they're talking about, okay? So I'm comfortable reposting them because I know they're vetted, I know they're educated, and I'm not. So they're educating. That's okay. Now, if I was to go out there and start doing, you know, shit on my own, I would think, whoa, 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 what's this guy doing? I think it's really admirable how you admit that because a lot of people might 
say, oh, I'll just share anything or, oh, I know what's going on. It's very clear. I'll just share it. And we've right. and we've seen that where they post fundraisers and, and they don't realize that there's right? a sanction where none of right. the money is going to Iran. Um, kind of just like shifting a little way towards that. What can, you know, more of your colleagues that are non-Iranian, how can they amplify our voices? Are, are people in the old man, you know, your yeah. fellow castmates, yes. what are they doing? They're they ask, they repost. That's what I say. So they ask me, what can we do? Yeah. And I go, dude, all you can do is just keep reposting me. Mm -hmm. You know, trust me, I'm posting things that are vetted. And if something isn't, I will take it off. For sure. um, and for, actually, I had a story. One of my friends, he's, you know, look, we don't agree politically. I hate Trump. OK, I, I don't I think he's a monster. This guy, you know, he's I grew up with him. He's a Marine. To me, anyone who's in the army or the you know, who fights for this country, they get a pass. I don't know why. I just can't. You can believe whatever you want. You're going and risking your life. So my buddy is a Marine. We grew up with him. And he sends me nonsense about Trump or whoever. Mm -hmm. And one night he sent me some stuff. I'm like, dude, not tonight, man. My country is in shambles. And this isn't funny to me right now. And I, I just can't deal with you. And he goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so insensitive. Tell me what I can do. If I had my, guess what he said, is that if I had my gun, I'd go over there and show him what's up. Oh That's like God. what a lot of He's Persian moms, I think, are saying. Yeah. He's a badass, you know, but he's like a white, you know, Marine. And we grew up together and he's completely right wing, you know. And then all I said was, dude, just repost me, repost. He's like, I only have a couple followers. I'm like, your followers, trust me, if anyone needs to see, it's your followers. So my point is, what one thing I can do is educate, because I'm not as in the Iranian community as these other women or these other men. You know, um, Aryan Moyad, for instance, or um, uh, Navid Negoban, all these amazing Iranian artists. They're they're educating me because this is all new to me. I've been in the, I've, I haven't been involved in Iranian stuff like this, and not because I don't want to. It just wasn't in my purview. Um, I didn't grow up in L.A. You know. So what I'm doing now, and I'm going to start it probably in a, in a week or so, is um, I'm going to do like 10-minute, 15-minute Instagram lives with my famous non-Iranians. And so they have a platform that they can see, and then they, their people can see like, oh, what's happening? Can educate on everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good great. And I'm having my friends, these intelligent women, tell me what I should say because I don't know. I just want to make sure I'm not at doing anything stupid for sure so, in this way it's a joint effort as right. well that's right so like nazanin's gonna tell me this is the points this is what you ask because this isn't something i'm comfortable with by the way it's out of all of our comfort, comfort zones right, right, right sure. you know yeah revolution is not an everyday not thing a, this is not time for me to be you know worried about my comfort level for sure so you know what's next for you you doing the instagram lives that's awesome mm -hmm. in terms of any new projects well we start season two of the old man in in uh next year um, and you're filming that right now? Right? We haven't started yet. Oh, okay. So we start shooting in, in a couple months. Can you talk about a little about the show? Yeah, it's amazing. It's the best show I've ever been a part of. Um, no offense to anything else. It's just, uh, I just, the, the, what about? I, it's about uh, Jeff Bridges and John Lithgow and Amy Brenneman. Uh, we, he is an ex-CIA officer who is on the run from the CIA currently. Uh, it's basically like John Wick, you know, like one of those, but with like real acting, in my opinion. Not that he's not a real actor. That's just all. The, 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 I'm just saying, not that Keon was not. He's just no. kicking ass the whole time. <laughs> There's not real dialogue. This is dialogue heavy. Um, and I play, um, I play uh, Jeff Bridges, like confidant, best friend, you know, you know, ally in in the '80s. Mm. So when he's younger, and uh, he betrays me and does all these things, you'll see. Um, so basically, I'm flashback young Jeff Bridges' life. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so you start really filming good. next year. And where you can we watch one? It's on Hulu okay. and uh, FX um, and Disney+. Plus. Thank you to our sponsors okay. of this episode, Retail Therapy Clinic. Amazing designs. Love this hoodie. Really comfortable, especially it's getting colder in L.A. right now. Yeah. Um, check our description of our YouTube video or in our Spotify um, to shop some of their clothing. They also have a really cool FIFA 2022 World Cup collection. So, um, is there a socials if you want to plug it in? Uh, yeah. I'm at Pejvadat at or Pejvadat, whatever. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much Thank for you, being Pat. here. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.